Hello and welcome to the Utah Puck Report. I'm your host Jay Stevens, and we're uh, we're getting through the whole roster here, and finally we get to go get to somebody that I've actually known for a long time, uh, Ian Cole. Welcome to Utah, man. I don't I don't know that you're here yet, but welcome to the team and uh, just welcome. Thanks for being on the yeah, show. Of course, thanks for having me, and we'll be there. Uh, we'll be there this weekend. So excited to get down. Nice. Hey, have you been here before? Have you been to Utah before? I've been to Utah a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I actually got some family in the area, so um it'll be uh it'll be really exciting to get to town and i mean obviously the hockey aspect's exciting but then also being close to family will be great that's uh your brother-in-law that lives here uh, sister-in-law and then uh in-laws as well okay very cool very cool um so a- as we've been kind of introducing our our audience so our our podcast just goes to directly to utah hockey people and they're dying to know more about you you want to tell us a little bit about like I know you're American. You want to tell us where you're from, uh, your time with the National Development Program, and where you went to college, which we all know. Yeah, yeah sure. I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, I uh, played at the U.S. national team, which also happened to be in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which worked out great uh, for me personally because I could stay at home. So I went to the same high school freshman, sophomore year. Uh, all the other USA guys moved to town, and I stayed at the same high school with my buddies and with my new teammates junior, senior year. So that aspect worked great. I could live at home and didn't have to move away. Uh, and then went to Notre Dame after that. So, uh, that's where we met our, our mutual friend, Kevin Deeth and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, spent, uh, three great years there and turned pro and, and went down to, went down to St. Louis. So. Yeah. Drafted by the St. Louis blues played a little bit with them. I, I think, did you even play a full season in the a with Peoria or did you get into the NHL pretty quick? Got into the NHL pretty quick. Uh, well, I mean, it was parts of three years. So first year I was up and down probably nine, 10 times, which was, which was tough. Uh, it was a tough year, first year. Um, and then second year I started down and then was up basically the rest of the season come like Thanksgiving ish. Uh, and my third year was, uh, the lockout, I guess. Yeah. So the, uh, I actually started down for the first half of the year while all the NHL, NHL guys were locked out cause I was still on my entry level so I could come up and go down. Uh, and then as soon as the season started in, you know, when was it January? I was, uh, I was up for the rest of the year. So, uh, parts of three years, uh, actually had one of my, uh, old coaches, Jared Bednar that I had in Colorado, had him in the minors in Peoria. So that was, uh, it was actually a really great three years. Learned a lot uh, and learned that I definitely didn't want to go back to the HL. I should probably just stay in the NHL. Yeah, a little better life, a lot, lot more money. Yep, way better. So, so after great then, you... Uh, with you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I'm sure these are the highlight of your yeah. day. Um, talk to us a little bit about your time in Pittsburgh. That's, that had to be amazing. Back-to-back cups. and Was it back-to-back? It was six, 16 and 17, right? Yep. 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 So, uh, back-to-back cups, uh, really great time, uh, in Pittsburgh, awesome people, awesome city, awesome fans. Um, really, really, a really close knit, great group of guys in the team. And, um, you know, really got taken care of extremely well there. So it was awesome. It was an awesome, uh, awesome four years there, had a ton of success, obviously on the ice and, and loved my time off the ice. So I can't say enough, enough great things about Pittsburgh. Yeah, that had to be amazing, and, and to to win cups. When you tell me about the first thing you did when you got the Stanley Cup, was it just with family? Was it, or or is this a not safe for work conversation? <laughs> no, it was. You know, what we did the first time I had it. The first year is I took it to breakfast. I took it to breakfast at uh, <laughs> one of our one of my childhood spots. We used to go to a bunch in Michigan. I uh, took it for took it to breakfast. Just set it right on the table. Didn't tell them we were coming. Just got a reservation and just sat on the table and just was eating. You know, French toast and pancakes and waffles, and just had it sitting as a centerpiece. So um, it was really great. Uh, it was a ton of fun. Uh, did a lot more stuff after that. We went to the children's hospital. We went to um, went to the local rink and, and did like kind of a meet and greet there. And so it was it was a pretty full day on top of all the you know dinners and parties and whatnot after that. Um, but a really special day, and I got to share it with a lot of people in the city of Ann Arbor. Yeah, so tell us, uh, that had to be magical. I, I've been lucky enough to be a part of three Stanley Cup parties, and every time it's just unbelievable. It's it's so cool just to know that you're part of that now, and well, for whoever won it, but just to be around such a legendary trophy is amazing. Um, 
What can the fans of Utah expect from you and your play? How would you sum yourself up? Oh, man. Uh, well, hopefully good play, first and foremost. Uh, now I get overly specific. But uh, listen, I mean, I think in today's NHL, you know, you got to be able to do everything, right? Like you can be a more defensive guy, but you still need to be able to make plays when they present themselves. You know, not everyone's going to be Quinn Hughes as a defenseman, but you still need to be able to execute on those plays. Uh, the same uh, can be said for if you're an offensive guy, right? So you, need to be able to, you need to be able to defend. You need to be able to play defense. Uh, gone are the days of the purely offensive guy or purely defensive guy. Uh, everyone needs to be able to do everything. So, um, you know, I'm a little bit more of a defensive guy, certainly. Uh, you know, not going to run a power play, but... You know, at the same time, we need to be able to create. We need to be able to get out of our end quickly. We need to be able to get on the offense, join the rush when the opportunity presents itself. So um, I would say a well-rounded, you know, uh, defense first, but, you know, two-way defenseman would be the best way to describe it. Yeah, and, you know, you're mid-30s now. What are you, 36, whoa, 35, whoa, whoa, 36? Whoa, 35, come on. <laughs> 35, so a fresh 35. And uh, now – it gets, you know, we bring you in and, and kind of the anticipation is not only are you going to be a leader on the ice, but you're going to be a mentor for some of the younger d Corps. Is that something that you realized was happening in your career that now you've got all this experience, you've been in the NHL for a long time, and now we need you as a defenseman, but we also need you as a mentor? You know, it's, it's an interesting transition, right? Like you go from being, you know, a quote young guy in the league to quote being an old guy in the league really quickly. Uh, it's amazing how, you know, from, uh, you know, age 27 to 29, all of a sudden you get old. Um, but, you know, I think the role of being a mentor and being, a, you know, almost like a, you know, kind of a intermediate between the coaches and the players and being able to kind of translate and help kind of uh, understand what they're trying to say uh, for the players. And then also being, you know, uh, you know, hopefully a shoulder to lean on and a leader and, um, you know, somebody that can help kind of with the grind of these very, very long seasons uh, is something that I look forward to. I think it's a role that I embrace and I'm very excited about, you know, that being said, I wouldn't say that uh, that is solely my role in the sense that I can't play anymore. Right. Um, you know, I think my past, you know, two, three, four seasons have been some of my best hockey I've ever played. Uh, you know, certainly last year was a good one. So, um, you know, when, you know, when you want to be a cer known as a cerebral guy in your play, uh, all the experience that you've acquired over the years helps you make better reads and just be a better player in my mind. So, um, you know, I don't think my game is slowing down at all. I don't think my uh, ability to play in the NHL is slowing down at all. Uh, so I take a lot of pride in that. I take a lot of pride in, uh, in the continuity of my play. Uh, that being said, uh, the ability to, to help mentor and be a leader is something I, I really look forward to and, and really cherish. Yeah, I think anybody – like, I watched all your games – well, not all your games, but I watched you play a lot last year. And uh, anybody that had the opportunity to watch you play with Vancouver, I don't think anybody doubts your ability in the NHL. You're clearly – the like – it was always told to me, well, J.P. Parisi used to tell me, you want to, you want to know who the coaches have confidence in? Look who's put on the ice after they score a goal or before they – or when they're scored on or when you score. Because yep. that next face-off, that next draw, that's the important part. And with Vancouver, you were on the ice and you were everywhere, blocking shots, just playing like you're 19 years old. And, and uh, so, yeah, like you're a huge add to the team. When I heard you were coming here, it was uh, – I was just like, man, that's perfect. That's that's exactly what this team needs for for all reasons. Like you just said, you're a, you're a two way defenseman. You're you're very cerebral in your play, and you know, I remember. And I just talked to Kevin a minute ago. In fact, I, I talked to Kevin Deeth, and I said, "All right, give me the dirt on this guy." And he said, "Man, the only thing I can say about Ian Cole is that he's one of the best fathers I've ever seen, best family man, and you can't beat him in the locker room or in the in the gym. Like he's he's a beast." And there is no dirt. There's no dirt on this guy. He's just phenomenal for whatever team you get. So I was, I was pretty excited to get a guy like you on the team. Um, tell us a little bit about when Utah came in the picture. And, and were you watching all the drama with Arizona, just kind of like not thinking that was going to really affect your life at all? Well, I'm, uh, like I'm pretty involved in NHLPA. You know, been on the board there for a while uh, on a lot of different committees, pension committee, audit committee, uh, the new executive director, uh, search committee. So pretty involved. So, you know, if nothing else, I was watching the the uh, let's call it the Arizona debacle 
uh, from an HRR perspective in terms of the uh, all the money that we were losing by having a team playing in a 5,000 seat arena. Um, you know, because that 50, 50 split, uh, is not, uh, it, it was taking a hit when Arizona was down there doing their thing. So, um, listen, the, the management was, was down there trying to do the best they could. The coaches were down there doing their job, the players doing their job. And, uh, I think they were being let down, um, by uh, the people that were signing the checks and, um, it was, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm super well versed on it. I'm sure I will hear stories uh, as soon as we get to town. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I do know that uh, the the bones of the organization, in terms of the management, uh, the people that were there working in the front office, uh, the coaches and the players, uh, were all pulling, were all pulling uh, their end of the bargain. So, um, you know, I use the word debacle carefully, but I think it's an accurate description. Yeah, that fits. Um, so when did Utah come onto your radar? Did you did you think like, hey, there's a whole new team? Did you reach out to them, or did they just come after you? It was one of those things, right? Uh, you know, you're a free agent. Uh, I loved my time in Vancouver. Um, I loved my uh, the guys there. We loved we loved being there. Uh, we would have loved to go back there, quite frankly. Uh, it didn't work out for for whatever reason. Um, so it's like, okay, we're going to free agency. Like, well, what's out there? Like, who's available? Uh, who wants me? Uh, you know, who's willing to pay what? And, um, you know, when Utah came into the picture, it was, uh, I mean, like I said, you know, I mentioned the family stuff before. Um, like, that was obviously you know, factored into the equation, for sure. Uh, and then on top of that, the uh, the ability to, you know, join a, you know, essentially an Arizona team that was moved up there that I really thought was tough to play against, that I really thought was a really good team, that had the ability to do you know, in my mind, what Vancouver did last year, where, you know, they had kind of been down, been a little depressed, missed the playoffs for a little bit. No one was really giving them any credit. You know, but I don't tell them, like, this is a really good team. We just got to change the mentality a little bit. Um, and that's kind of how I view, you know, formerly Arizona, now Utah in that same way, right? Like, we need to change the mentality. We need to learn how to win hockey games and win hockey games consistently over 82 games. Uh, you know, we need to stop looking at the playoffs as if it's some, you know, impossible to attain a goal that like, Oh man, if we play perfect, we might, no, no, no. The playoffs. We can make the playoffs. Like we're fine. We just need to win hockey games and we need to, we need to change the mentality a little bit. Um, and I know that some of the guys, you know, that we brought in this year are trying to help with that. Um, you know, Sergey's had a ton of success. Um, it's, uh, you know, the signing from, from Florida's had success. Um, you know, when it's something where, you know, we just we need to be able to change that mindset a little bit, and I think that that the team will will put a much different product on the ice. Yeah, I think so. And it, when you change out fifty percent of your decor and 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 bring in guys like you and Sergeyev, like obviously you guys are going to be that's going to create that stability that hopefully you're looking for. And we talked about your veteran leadership. Um, all right, so here's the big question, and I and I've asked a lot of people this question, and it goes. You know, it's all over the place. You've seen what we still have are the six final names for the team. <laughs> right now we're the Utah Hockey Club. Jerseys are pretty sick, though. And the name's grown on me. I got the hat. Like, I'm, I'm down. I like the logo. But out of the six names left, do you have a favorite? Does your wife and kids, do they have a favorite? You know, we haven't discussed it at length. So I uh, can't say if they have favorites. Um and ultimately, like, I think it's going to come down to a fan vote, right? Or, or have they already? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a fan vote, yeah. yeah. So uh, ultimately, whatever the fans, you know, want, we'll, I'll be happy with for sure. I will say there's something, uh, the Utah Yeti rolls out the tongue very nicely uh, just from a, you know, linguistic perspective, if you will. Yeah. Every, play, every player I've interviewed has said Yeti except, well, uh, Josh Doan was kind of back and forth. He liked Venom and, and some of those other things, but you guys seem to be pretty united, whether you know whether you plan it or not. Everybody seems to be united on Yeti. Yeah, well, you know what? I actually haven't spoken to any of the guys past a uh, welcome text message and and uh, haven't talked team names, so I think that that's uh, I think there's something there. Yeah, I think there's something there. Whether I want it to be yeah. or not, that's all good. Um, are there guys on the team that you've played with before? Uh, I played with Kerfoot in... Colorado. I played with Bukestad in Minnesota, and then obviously played with Sergi in, in Tampa. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Well, Ian, I know, I know you've got a lot going on, and you've got your family with you. 
and I don't like you and I got to sit down and do a long podcast and talk about everything. Yeah, man, I'd love to. And love uh, to. yeah, we're excited to have you in. Welcome to Utah when you get here. I think you're going to love it. This is a great place to raise your family. It's beautiful here, as you know, and I'm glad you got family here. Uh, anything else you want to say to the fans of Utah before we let you go? No, just excited to, excited to be there, excited to, to get to work and, and get the season going. Yeah, we're excited too, man. Well, uh, thanks again, and that is the Utah Puck Report. I want to give a special thanks to Chipman Roofing. These are hockey people supporting the hockey community. It's Chipman Roofing. For all your roofing needs, uh, just check out chipmanroofing.com. And if you like what you hear on the podcast, please leave a review, leave a rating. Wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, make sure you give us a rating. like to uh, check out kslsports.com as well. Uh, there's going to be more hockey on there. As, as more hockey comes up, it's going to be always right there, kslsports.com. Big thanks to Madison Miller for putting up with us and making this thing work. Yeah,